and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm back with another 10 minute sewing projects video. With the festive season quickly approaching, I wanted to share some projects that would make some really nice handmade gifts. And I think the projects I'll be sharing in this video are going to be perfect. So let's jump straight into it. First up, let's make this over the top giant tote bag. For this project, I'm using this stunning fabric that a viewer kindly sent me. She designs the fabric herself and I'll leave a link to her Instagram in the description below this video if you'd like to check it out. To make the tote bag, start by measuring and cutting out one 75 by 90 centimeter or 30 by 35 and a half inch rectangle and two 80 by 8 centimeter or 31 and a half by 3 inch rectangles. Take the two skinnier rectangles and press in the raw edge by about one centimetre or half an inch. Then fold the rectangles in half and press in place. Stitch the folded rectangles closed by top stitching as close to the edge as you can. Then do the same for the other edge. These are going to be the bag straps. Next, take the larger rectangle and with right sides together, fold it in half, meeting the two shorter edges together. Stitch the rectangle together like this. I then chose to overlock my raw edges to prevent them from fraying, but if you don't own an overlocker, you can use a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine instead. Then, I also overlocked the raw edge of the opening. Next, fold and press the opening edge of the bag by about 2.5 centimeters or an inch. Then take the straps we made before and position them inside the pressed edge at the center of the bag. I place mine about 25 centimeters or 10 inches from the edge of the bag. Stitch the folded edge down, securing the straps as you sew. Do this by folding the strap up over the folded edge and stitch across it like this. Then repeat this step, but this time stitch as close to the edge of the bag as you can. To finish the bag, fold the bottom corners of the bag together and stitch approximately 4cm or 2 inches from the top of the point. This makes the bag a little bit roomier and makes it able to carry bulkier things. Fold the bag right side out, give it a good press, and your giant tote bag is complete. Next, let's make these retro pot holders. Use the template I've made for this video, you can find a link to it in the description, and cut out two squares in the fabric of your choice. Then cut out the strap. Again, there's a template for this too. For this project, we are also going to be using an insulated wadding that is needed when working with hot items. You could alternatively use a few layers of ordinary wadding, but this insulated wadding is definitely the safer option and is what I recommend you use too. Cut out one square of the wadding and you should now have the following pieces. Start by taking the strap piece and press in the raw edges by about one centimeter or half an inch. Then fold the strap in half and press in place. Stitch the folded strap closed by top stitching as close to the edge as you can. Then do the same for the other edge. Fold the finished strap in half and place it onto the right side of one of your squares about one centimeter or half an inch from the top of the square. Then with right sides together, place the other square on top and then place the wadding on top of that. 
Pin all of the layers together. Next, stitch around the square, leaving a medium sized opening like this. Trim away the excess fabric. And use the opening to turn the pot holder right side out. Press the holder, making sure to tuck and press the opening closed. Then top stitch around the edge of the pot holder, stitching the opening closed as you sew. And your handy little pot holder is complete. Now let's make these cute semicircle pouches. For this project, you'll need a main fabric, a lining fabric, and a 15 centimeter or six inch zip in the color of your choice. Again, I've shared a template for this project too. Cut two of the semicircles out of the main fabric and two in the lining fabric. So all up, you should have the following pieces. Take the zip and place it face down onto one of the main fabric semicircles. Then with right sides together, place one of the lining semicircles on top and pin it in place. Stitch the layers together, opening the zip up to be able to sew past it easily. And you should now have something that looks like this. Then repeat this process for the other side of the zip. Next, open the zip about three quarters of the way and fold the main fabrics onto one another and the lining fabrics onto one another. Stitch around the circle, leaving a small opening at the lining fabrics like this. And be very careful not to break your needle as you sew over the zip. Trim away the excess fabric. And using the opening, turn the pouch right side out. Using something like a knitting needle, push the seam out as much as you can to make the semicircle shape more pronounced. Then the last step is to fold and press the opening and then stitch it closed. up let's make this useful tool roll. To make this project you'll need a 40 by 50 centimeter or 16 by 20 inch rectangle in your main fabric and in a lining fabric. You will also need two 35 by 6 centimeter or 14 by two and a half inch rectangles for the ties. Start by folding in one of the shorter ends of the ties by about one centimeter or half an inch. Then press the tie in half and fold the raw edges into the center crease. Fold in half once more and stitch in place by top stitching both edges of the tie. Place the ties onto the main fabric rectangle approximately 12 centimeters or five inches from the top of the longer edge. Then with right sides together, place the lining rectangle on top of the main fabric rectangle and pin together sandwiching the ties in place as you pin. Stitch around the rectangle leaving a medium sized opening like this, securing the ties in place as you stitch. Trim the excess fabric away and use the opening to turn the rectangle right side out. Poke out the corners as best you can with a knitting needle and give the rectangle a good press. 
Top stitch along the entire rectangle, stitching the opening closed as you sew. Then fold the bottom end without the ties up by about 12 centimeters or 5 inches and stitch in place along the edges. Then sew pockets along this folded edge. For example, I stitch rows of one and a half centimeters or three quarters of an inch for pencils and knitting needles and 10 centimeters or four inch rows for larger pockets that can hold a pair of scissors and things like that. But you can make your pockets whatever size you like. And you should now have something that looks a bit like this. Simply pop your bits and pieces inside and fold and tie it up to keep your tools nicely contained in one place. Lastly, let me show you how to make a fabric glasses case. Start by measuring the glasses you'd like to make the case for and then add 7 centimeters or 2 and 3 quarter inches to the length and 4 centimeters or 1 and a half inches to the width. Then cut out two fabric rectangles of these measurements. With right sides together, place the rectangles together and stitch along the outside edges leaving a small 1 centimeter or half an inch opening along one of the edges like this. Turn the rectangle right side out and press it flat. Fold and tuck the opening edge by about 1.5 centimeters or three quarters of an inch. And stitch it in place to create a casing. Take a piece of thin elastic that is about 5 centimeters or 2 inches bigger than the case's width and use a safety pin to feed the elastic through the small opening. Once fed through, tie the elastic into a double knot and you should now be able to pull the elastic to close the fabric case. enjoyed this video and that you now have some new sewing projects to keep yourself busy with. If you have any 10 minute sewing project ideas that you would love to see in future videos like this one, then leave your suggestions down in the comments below as I would love to hear your thoughts. Also, just quickly before I finish this video, I'm going to be sharing how to make this amazing shirred puffy sleeve dress that is literally just made from four rectangles in next week's video. So make sure you subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see that. And like always, if you have a go at making any of these projects for yourself, then I would love to see them. So be sure to tag me at Rosary Apparel when you share your photos on Instagram. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching.